And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes, and this is uh, Gwen's Bookish Ramblings, which apparently I can't even remember my own titles. And today I'm going to ramble aimlessly about Dave Barry's Complete Guide to Guides, as you can see in the picture. Uh, and uh, there are, of course, six pictures of Dave Barry. Um, so you don't even have to wonder what he looks like. Uh, so, this book was uh, written in, I assume, probably 1994, but it's copyright 95 to Dave Barry. And uh, this is probably my favorite Dave Barry book uh, ever. Uh, this has the one scene in it that always puts me into helpless stitches of laughter. Um, that is, of course, the scene between Roger and Elaine in the car. Uh, I'll get back to Roger and Elaine in a minute. This particular book is... It's a, just humor. Um, it is, I suppose, you could call it non-fiction. Um, Dave Barry, for those who may not know, was a humor columnist uh, primarily with the uh, Miami Herald. Uh, he retired from being a columnist relatively recently although he still puts out uh, columns at various times, but I think he is at least semi-retired. Uh, anyways, I, I don't think I have to tell you he's a Pulitzer Prize-winning humorist because it's on the cover of what, as you can see up in the top right corner of this picture with the uh, dog earring that's happening there, is my personal copy of this book, which I have owned since, I believe, 1995. Um, so, The Guide to Guys is that look at men as, as goofy, sex-obsessed, um, well, allow me to put up one of the, uh, tables that Dave Barry actually has in his book to give you an idea of the kind of the kind of idea, the kind of approach that he's taking to this concept of guys. And that is his stimulus response comparison chart, women versus men versus guys. And as you look at this, the stimulus, an untamed river in the wilderness, and then you have following that the typical woman response, the typical man response, and the typical guy response. Notice he's drawing a distinction between men and guys. That's because you're dealing with men who are manly men and the kinds of men who actually play football, American football, who play rugby, who uh, conquer Asia Minor, who do things that require large amounts of aggressive testosterone and who have the... Uh, complete lack of connection with their emotions in a way that uh, makes them at least attempt to indicate that they have no emotions but anger. Whereas his definition in this book of guy is uh, basically all those stupid people on YouTube who do things to get attention like uh, you know, set themselves on fire in their shower and desperately try to put themselves out. And so, the difference between the man response and the guy response to an untamed river is build a dam for the manly response and see who can pee the farthest off the dam for the guy. A child who's sent home from school for being disruptive in class, threatened to send the child to a military academy, or... If you are a guy, teach the child how to make armpit farts. Uh, the point here is that he's discussing mostly not seriously, mostly humorously, um, what's going on inside of men's minds when they're not trying to be hyper-masculine. And... There are parts of this, and I speak as somebody whose father looked over her shoulder while reading this book in the chapter on the um, 
the male urinal issues and said, yes, no, that's, that's all true. He's not being one, he's not being 100% facetious in this, just say, uh, 85 to 90% facetious. Um, so, uh, as another example, of course, of his, uh, of his being facetious is the guy DNA molecule, which includes Look right here as I circle it with my mouse, the noogie gene, which is buried in this guy DNA molecule, shown actual size, booger, 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 noogie, booger, 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 booger. Because uh, the noogie gene is what inspires men to violence, according to Dave Barry. Um, it's... The thing about this book, of course, is that, like most of his books, derives from various humor columns that he's done. Um, a lot of his books, if you look through the collection of the humor columns that he had written, probably, I would guess, approximately a year before the release of the book, a year to two years, you would find a column that he had written that he then expanded upon uh, tremendously and made it into a book. Um, you can absolutely find that with, uh, Dave Barry's Book of Bad Songs, which talks about a tremendous list of horrifyingly awful songs from between 1950 to approximately 1975. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I, there are one or two jokes in his column I wish he had made it into the book just because it means I wouldn't have to look up the column every time I wanted to dredge up those particular jokes, but what can you do? Um, so, uh, for anyone who's never read Dave Barry, you, of course, probably uh, would want to have some notion of what he's about. And, uh, I'm going to, as I have said, uh, talk about Roger and Elaine in the car. Or, more to the point, I will read you excerpts of Roger Elaine and Elaine in the car, because this is my favorite part of the book, and, uh, this is the part of the book that I personally find funniest. Um, and in this, this is a quick fictional scene that he's written up for an, an idea, a discussion about how, you know, men are from Mars or, and women are from Venus, or uh, women are actually thinking about relationships and men are thinking about not relationships. There's one evening when they're driving home a thought occurs to Elaine, and without really thinking, she says it aloud. Do you realize that as of tonight, we've been seeing each other for exactly six months? And then there is silence in the car. To Elaine, it seems like a very loud silence. She thinks to herself, Geez, I wonder if it bothers him that I said that. Maybe he's been feeling confined by our relationship. Maybe he thinks I'm trying to push him into some kind of obligation that he doesn't want or isn't sure of. And Roger is thinking, Gosh, six months. And Elaine thinks a great deal about whether they're heading towards marriage, towards children, and is she ready for a commitment. And Roger thinks, so that means it was, let's see, February when we started going out, which was right after I had the car at the dealers, which means, let me check the odometer, whoa, I am way overdue for an oil change here. And Elaine is thinking, he's upset. I can see it on his face. And she becomes convinced that, of course, he's afraid of rejection. And Roger is thinking... And I'm going to have him look at the transmission again. I don't care what those morons say. It's still not shifting right. Maybe I'll try to blame it on the cold weather this time. What cold weather? It's 87 degrees out, and this thing is shifting like a goddamn garbage truck. And I paid those incompetent, thieving, cretin bastards $600. And Elaine is thinking that he's angry. And that she feels guilty. And Roger is thinking about the 90-day warranty. And Elaine is thinking, maybe I'm just too idealistic, waiting for a knight to come riding up on his white horse. 
when I'm sitting right next to a perfectly good person, a person who seems to be in pain because of my self-centered schoolgirl romantic fantasy. And Roger is thinking, warranty? They want a warranty? I'll give them a goddamn warranty. I'll take their warranty and stick it right up there. Roger, Elaine says aloud. What? says Roger, startled. Please don't torture yourself like this, she says, her eyes beginning to brim with tears. Maybe I should never. Oh, God, I feel so. She breaks down, sobbing. What? says Roger. I'm such a fool, Elaine sobs. I mean, I know there's no knight. I really know that. It's silly. There's no knight and there's no horse. There's no horse, says Roger. This goes on for a little bit longer, um, and you can certainly take this book out of the library, find it online, purchase it yourself in some way. Um, but uh, at the end of it, Elaine has spent days and weeks and months agonizing with her girlfriends over what Roger is thinking and how he feels, and Roger one day turns to a mutual friend and asks, Norm, did Elaine ever own a horse? I, I love it because it's absolutely describing two people who just are not connecting in any way on this topic, and it's, it's really, really very, very funny. Um, I mean, perhaps you wouldn't find it so. Everybody has different things that they find humorous, and certainly Dave Barry has a tendency to make uh, low-class jokes. Um, but if you're the kind of person who reads his Mr. Language Person columns where he corrects grammar by still being wrong and gets very angry with him for not correcting grammar correctly, uh, you probably won't enjoy these books. So, aside from that, uh, there is one thing, of course, that I should warn anybody who's reading this about, which is, there is one joke in here that is a joke out of time. And that's a joke uh, in his lead-up to discussing the Corvair Appreciation Society of America's exploding vacuum cleaner competition, which, if anyone should ever want to put that together and post video of that on YouTube, let me know, because I want to look that up. But um, there is that one joke um, is about a friend of his who really, really liked playing with fireworks, and he makes a crack that circa 1995 was funny, that if his friend had been involved with those terrorists who had threatened to bomb the World Trade Center, that it would now be known as the World Trade Pit. Well, in 1995, a good six years before the September uh, 11th attacks, uh, that was funny. And if you can put yourself in a frame of mind that all bombing attacks up until that point, had been, in fact, uh, thwarted by the authorities, and up until that point, those attacks uh, had not come to anything. If you can put yourself into that frame of mind, the joke remains funny. If you can't forget it, um, well, uh... I forgot to mark the page, but I can absolutely uh, put in the comments below that the uh, point where you should probably just skip ahead just to not read the joke so that you don't, um, well, deal with any potential trauma. I would hope that nobody would be triggered by a mere mention of this, but you never know. Um, in any event, I love this book. I think it's hilarious. I think it's wonderful, and I think Dave Barry cannot be uh, spoken for enough as a humor writer and as an entertainer and as one of the great humorists of the 20th century, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, and that's the end of today's ramble. I hope somebody enjoyed it, and if they did, I hope to see them again in the next video. Thank you, and everybody have a great day.